recent Israeli strikes on Iranian military production facilities tied to the Ukrainian war have analysts worried about whether this represents a new stage in the expansion of that war to territory beyond Ukraine. For more on that, we go to Moscow to speak with analyst Mark Sloboda. We spoke with him via Skype on Monday. So, Mark, let's take a look at this whole relationship. I mean, it follows up kind of behind that thing we discussed a week or two ago when Biden back in 97 was saying, uh, gee whiz, go ahead, Russia. If, if uh, you don't like what we're doing, go make pals with China and ha, 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 what you do something with Iran. Now we're looking actually Iran, Ukraine, all of this stuff is kind of a piece of one whole cloth. So lots of smart, credible people, right? Academics, analysts, politicians have suggested that the conflict in Ukraine has all the potential to blow up into a World War III scenario with states around the world being dragged in, yep. right? Uh, and while NATO is propping up the putsch regime in Kiev with all their military and economic power, and there are a lot of legitimate reasons to say that they are not just participants in the conflict, but actually at war with Russia and Ukraine. But right. the conflict still is has been restricted uh, territorially to Ukraine and to a lesser extent into Russia, right? Uh, so this all may have changed in the last week, and the conflict has quietly expanded into the Middle East. So um, on uh, last Sunday, January 28th, kamikaze drone strikes hit Iranian military depots and workshops in the city of Isfahan. Uh, Iran claims that Israel is responsible. That's almost certainly the case. Uh, the Zionist regime in Israel regularly conducts strikes, bombings, assassinations, sabotage, terrorism in Iran. It declines to claim credit while smugly suggesting, you know, boasting, you know, the opposite. Right. Now, uh, in the Western media, anonymous U.S. officials, while implausibly denying they had any involvement in this, have openly admitted, confirmed that Israel was responsible for the strikes right now there is the uh repugnant vanderite uh kiev regime presidential advisor who was very active on um uh, twitter mihailo Podolyok, and he gloated there with a post on twitter uh saying that a war logic is inexor inexorable and murderous it builds the authors and accomplices and he goes on and then in a little bit explosive night in iran Drone and missile production, oil refineries, Ukraine did warn you with a smiley face, right? Uh, so Iranian Iran was furious. They summoned the Ukrainian ambassador, demanded an explanation and a refutation of the obvious boasting by a presidential advisor of Ukrainian complicity in and celebration of the attacks. Well, up till now, um, uh, Israel had uh, been very moderate in its support of Ukraine as part of the West, right? Uh, uh, the uh, Naftali, he had condemned Moscow, uh, but he had right, but he only shared information about on the particulars yeah. of the type of drone models that Iran was supplying uh, Russia with and um, a small number of uh, anti-drone uh, equipment specifically designed to target those drones. But that was it. And the obvious reason is why, because Russia has advanced air defense systems and an air force in Syria uh, that it could turn on at any moment. And obviously, for the last few years, there's been a devil's agreement between Israel and Russia that Israel stays out of the regime change business in Syria. And in return, Russia doesn't hit Ukrainian uh, fighters if they're attacking Hamas. Or, you mean Israeli uh, fighters? Israeli. Uh, yeah, Israeli fighters attacking uh, Hezbollah or uh, Iranian-backed militants on Syrian territory. And uh, Russia has also not let the Syrian government even turn on the S-300 systems against Israeli fighters that they supplied right. with, right? Uh, so, But obviously there's the threat they could do this, so Israel has been muted in their support. And then Yahoo came in, and he specifically said, or his foreign men who foreign minister, Eli Cohen, said, we're going to talk much less about this. And it's assumed that Netanyahu has kind of a business-like relationship with Putin. They don't like each other, but they can deal with each other. They, you know, they have in the past. Uh, but this 
he came out and he suggested on CNN, he said outright, Israel attacks in ways that I will not itemize here against Iran's weapons production, which are used against Ukraine. Right. Uh, so he's directly suggesting that at least part of the rationale for the strikes, if not their reason, was to target the weapons supply to Russia. Uh, and their foreign minister did the exact same uh, – sorry, their ambassador to Germany, the Israeli ambassador to Germany, did the exact same thing. He said, we help, albeit behind the scenes, much more than is known. Uh, the Israeli army regularly blocks armed shipments uh, from Iran. These include Iranian drones and missiles that Russia is using in Ukraine. So this is huge because – what they're suggesting is that at least part of the rationale for their attacks in Israel are over what's happening in Ukraine. This right. is the this is, uh, you know, people on both sides uh, aligned with Russia or the Kiev regime in Ukraine now engaged in a hot war in Israel and uh, Iran uh, over the conflict there. The conflict is spreading. Or There's another at least aspect of this too, because you've got the rules of engagement that people have been following in order to sort of avoid, you know, a massive yes. uh, up confliction on this thing. And now yeah, suddenly the Israelis are saying, since uh, Iran is sending what they're claiming, since Iran is sending weapons to Russia, um, that we're going to target those weapons. Well, yes. as Germany and Poland and Romania and these other places, the U.S. included, send weapons to Ukraine, how does Russia not take the same tack? The same logic, the same logic, right? Whether directly or they could supply weapons to their Ukrainian allies and say, oh, right. we're not responsible. It, right. You know, yeah. it's it's our allies using the same proxy BS argument that the right. U.S. has been using, right? right? So, I mean, and this has all the potential, right? This conflict could easily expand into Moldova or Belarus to NATO member states, like we just said, yeah. into the divided Korean Peninsula with both sides arming different sides of the conflict. Uh, you know, uh, it could um, really go global at this, and this right. should scare everybody. The the potential here, right? The 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 match has been lit. And it is it is being pulled uh, towards the uh, you know the yes. accelerant line uh, uh, woodpile here, um, yep. and yep. Uh, we're 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 at a real danger. Yeah. So, uh, what do you see uh, developing in terms of a response? I mean, how how does Russia manage this in a way that you know keeps it fair on the battlefield if there's such a you know concept possible, and yet doesn't lead to a direct you know, I, I don't think any sane person wants to have this thing escalate. And I don't think that we have that many sane people in Washington. And the ex that shouldn't be an excuse for Russia. And Russia can't really surrender. No. So so how do they deal with this? I, I don't think they do. I think they brush it under the carpet, pretend it wasn't what it was. They've simply demanded that Iran not or Israel not supply more weapons to Ukraine. The U.S. keeps pressuring them to pr provide the, the Iron Dome or the older Hawk Air defense system. Right. Uh, that actually wouldn't do Ukraine any good anyway, but it's about political support. Uh, so I think they try to pretend this didn't happen like they have accepted Israeli strikes on Hezbollah allies and, and Iranian allies in Syria. They might just take this as a cost of business. And, and it, right. I don't think bigger that either Russia or Israel want to go to war with each other over this. And so cooler heads prevailing. All right, Mark, thank you so much. We'll speak with you about this next week. Thanks. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.